Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be taking the mass, momentum, and energy equations that we derived in the previous lesson and use them to relate the Mach numbers before and after a shock wave. So this is actually quite a complex process. It's going to get kind of tight, but bear with me and we'll get through it. So I'm going to start off by writing out the mass, momentum, and energy equations. So on top of these, one of the key tools that we're going to be using is the definition of the speed of sound. That makes sense since we're trying to get to the Mach number, which is just velocity divided by the speed of sound. So the speed of sound is equal to the square root of gamma times r times t. And this is also equal to gamma times p divided by rho. And this holds true for any ideal gas. The next thing we need is the concept of a critical state. Now, we've talked about stagnation before, where we take a flow state and just reduce its speed isentropically and adiabatically until it's stopped. And what happens with that is that we take all of this energy that's in kinetic energy form, and we transform that into internal energy. Well, this is a similar process. Instead of moving things where the velocity is zero, we're going to be moving the velocity until it reaches uh, the speed of sound, wherever it happens to be. So what this means is that our energy is decreasing from t1 in this example down to t star, and that changes the speed of sound. So this a star is not the same as a1, it's actually less than a1, but our velocity has increased up to the a star. Now all of this is done by essentially changing only the energy, and if you remember the total amount of energy is the same before and after a shock. So t naught one is equal to t naught two is equal to t naught. Well, the same is true for the critical state. We're only changing energy, which means that a one star is going to be equal to a two star, which is just equal to a star. And the same is true for temperature and enthalpy. Okay, so these are our tools. Now, in order to make use of the speed of sound, we really need to change around the energy equation. So that's going to be our first step. We can write h as cp times t. I'm not going to write out both states here. I'm only going to keep it to a generic state. So cpt plus u squared over 2. Now we can rewrite this by writing cp as gamma divided by gamma minus 1 times r. And then finally, we recognize that gamma rt is simply equal to a squared. So this can once again be rewritten as a squared divided by gamma minus 1 plus u squared over 2. So now I can take this generic state and specify it to state 1, state 2, and then this star state, the critical state. So I said it before, but I'm going to reiterate that the velocity at the critical state is exactly the speed of sound at that state. So the last thing I want to do is actually rewrite this state as a single term. And we end up with gamma plus 1 over 2 times gamma minus 1. All of that times a star squared. Now this is an important equation. We're going to use it again. So I'm going to call this equation 1. The next thing I want to do is divide out our generic state and this critical state by u squared. I can write the generic state again but I want to divide by u squared. So then our second term here is just 1 over 2. And then I can do the same thing with my critical state and end up with gamma plus 1 over 2 times gamma minus 1 multiplied by a star squared over u squared. This I can actually write as 1 over Mach squared. This I can write as 1 over m star squared. My next step is going to be multiply through by 2 times gamma minus 1, just to get rid of a lot of the denominators, and rewrite these as Mach numbers. The gamma minus 1 cancels out, so we just end up with 2 divided by m squared plus gamma minus 1, and that's equal to gamma plus 1 over m star squared. 
So now I can simplify this and solve for m star squared as a function of m squared. I'm going to move the m star squared to the left hand side. Let's just divide through by gamma plus 1. So this becomes 2 over gamma plus 1 multiplied by 1 over m squared plus gamma minus 1 over gamma plus 1. Now we can write this as a single term by multiplying this by m squared over m squared. So this just becomes 2 plus gamma minus 1 times m squared all over gamma plus 1 times m squared. And then finally, we can solve for m star squared. So this is equal to gamma plus 1 times m squared divided by 2 plus gamma minus 1 times m squared. This is going to be another equation that we will use later, so I'm going to mark this as equation 2. Okay, we're about halfway there. We have rewritten the energy equation in terms of this critical speed of sound. So we're going to need to change these two equations into something similar. So we're going to start off by writing the momentum equation. And we're going to divide it through by the mass equation. Now, this is all right because we know that rho one u one is equal to rho two u two. So we can get away with this. So we simplify this and multiply by gamma over gamma. What I'm doing here is creating our other a squared definition. And then finishing out the term is just u one. I can do the exact same thing on the right hand side. So rewriting this, we end up with a one squared over gamma u1 plus u1 is equal to a2 squared over gamma u2 plus u2. Now this is where we want to change the speeds of sound into the critical speed of sound that we solve for down here. But in order to do that, we need to use this equation 1. Now I want to rearrange this. So I'm going to multiply equation 1 by gamma minus 1. At a generic state, this is a squared plus gamma minus 1 over 2 multiplied by u squared. And then I also want to write this with the critical state. So gamma minus 1 times the critical state here is just gamma plus 1 over 2 multiplied by a star squared. So all I want to do with this now is solve for a. So a here is going to be equal to gamma plus 1 over 2 multiplied by a star squared. And then we just need to move this other term to the right-hand side. So if I label this as equation 3 and this as equation 4, I can plug 4 into 3 and arrive at the following. Now this is where it starts to get really messy. The first term is going to be this gamma plus 1 over 2 a star squared divided by gamma u1. So we end up with gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma u1, and then that's going to be multiplied by a star squared. Then we need our second term over here, so we have a minus, and we just need to have gamma minus 1 over 2 multiplied by this gamma u1, and then we have u1 squared. And then finally, we just add the u1, which doesn't change. And I can rewrite the exact same thing for state 2. Now my next step in the simplification is just to move everything to the left-hand side. And what I end up with is gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma. This is going to be multiplied by a star squared on both sides. I have a 1 over u1 on the left minus the 1 over u2 on the right. Now for this next one, the u1 in the bottom is going to cancel out with one of our u1s in the numerator. So we end up with a negative gamma minus 1 over 2 gamma. We could ignore that u1 and just end up with u1 minus u2. And then the last one is easy. We just have a plus u1 minus u2. And all of this is equal to 0. So what I want to do next is to get rid of all these u1 minus u2s and take them out and divide through the entire equation by them. 
but this doesn't divide through quite as easily. So let's just do a little bit of work and try to get this into a form that's a little easier to work with. So u1 minus u2, if we cross multiply, we end up with u2 minus u1 over u1, u2. This is equal to just a negative u1 minus u2 over u1, u2. So we can actually take this one over u1 minus one over u2 and get it into a form that has this u1 minus u2 term. So now let's go ahead and take that out of each of our terms and write what remains. So this became a negative u1 minus u2 over u1, u2. So I'm going to have a gamma plus 1 over 2 gamma. I'm going to go ahead and put in my negative here. We took out the u1 minus u2. And so all that's left is an a star squared over u1, u2. This next term I can basically just leave alone. Just a negative gamma minus 1 over 2 gamma. And I'm going to recognize that I have a 2 gamma in the denominator for the other two. So I'm going to write this last one as 2 gamma divided by 2 gamma. And all of this is equal to 0. Now at this point, I can get rid of the 2 gammas. I'm going to go ahead and multiply through by negative 1 in this term. So we have a plus, we have the minus, and we have a plus. So what we end up with is this gamma plus 1 times a negative uh, multiplied by a star squared over u1, u2. And here we have 2 gamma minus gamma, so gamma plus 1 again. So we can take out the gamma plus 1, and we just end up with a negative a star squared over u1, u2, plus 1 is equal to 0. So now I can move this to the right-hand side and say that 1 is equal to 1 over m1 star, m2 star. Well, it's not a far leap to say that this also means that m1 star is equal to 1 over m2 star. And then if I square both of these, then I have something that I can plug in for each. So now I'm going to go back to my equation 2 and plug that in for both m1 and m2. Now, what does this look like? Gamma plus 1 multiplied by m1 squared all over 2 plus gamma minus 1 times m1 squared is going to be equal to the inverse for m2. So that means that 2 plus gamma minus 1 times m2 squared all over gamma plus 1 times m2 squared. And now we have a relationship directly between Mach 1 and Mach 2. Now, I'm not going to go through the work of solving this, but it is possible to solve this for m2. So we have the final equation of this lesson as m2 squared is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times m1 squared. All of that divided by gamma m1 squared minus gamma minus 1 over 2. So this is what we are trying to get to the entire time. We have a relationship between Mach 1 and Mach 2. Now, once we have this, we can actually go in and solve for relationships for pressure, for density, for the velocity, and for temperature. So from this, we can get a picture of the state after the shock based solely on the state before the shock. And that's what we'll be covering in our next lesson.